Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I first take a moment to um, thank sincerely all those on the front line today bearing the burden of this public health crisis on our behalf. They deserve our full support and cooperation as much as our gratitude and admiration. I also acknowledge the enormous efforts and dedication shown by the Minister and his officials in working to address the myriad of challenges posed by this crisis in making uh, regular media appearances and maintaining contact with the committee, which is essential to communicate important messages and ensure public confidence. The Health Committee was briefed yesterday on the health aspects of the Coronavirus Bill and the LCM, including measures in relation to the workforce, mental health and mental capacity, and new powers in relation to public health. The Committee was in no doubt about the urgent need to take responsible action to save lives. We know our health and social care workforce was already under immense strain before this challenge added to the difficulties. Officials advise on measures to facilitate rapid expansion of all sectors by streamlining the registration requirements and protecting pension arrangements of those retired. We were advised, <coughs> excuse me, we were advised that the immediate focus would be on those <coughs> we were advised that the immediate focus would be on those who retired within the last three years, and the next step would be consideration of those who have recently completed training or are currently in pre-registration roles or final year. Members inquired about the likely impact of the measures and were advised that contact was being made with around 500 recently retired medical staff, around 200 pharmacists in addition to other professions. Having raised issues in relation to community pharmacy, members were heartened to learn that greater support for existing community pharmacy workforce is in train in terms of the rollout of PPE and additional funding to respond to greater demand. They were also encouraged to hear that there has been an extremely positive response to the call for pharmacists and other sectors to come forward to help where resources are most needed. We were further advised that provisions for emergency volunteers, including a compensation scheme for loss of earnings, would help encourage further workers into the system. Members are very appreciative of the speedy work to enable this and realise fully that our HSC workforce is our single greatest asset and must be protected and supported as they work to protect and support us. Mr Speaker, turning to the mental capacity and mental health, members inquired about the clauses streamlining decision making were, and were advised that in all cases two persons would be required to make key decisions and that there would remain a right of appeal. It was explained that the streamlining would free up staff resource to focus on urgent care priorities. In terms of public health, the committee further discussed the new suite of powers available under Schedule 17 in terms of public health protection. They noted that before making regulations to avail of the powers, the department would, having consulted the, medical, the chief medical officer, declare a serious and imminent threat to public health and only then exercise powers if they felt to provide an effective means of delaying or reducing transmission of the disease. They were further assured by the that the department would be required to revoke the powers when the situation has passed. Members inquired about the nature of the additional powers, the time periods involved in detaining people for screening or isolation, and were also advised about the right of appeal to magistrates' court. Members raised concern about informal public gatherings at the weekend, which seemed to suggest not everyone had heard the message clearly about social distancing and staying at home where possible. The committee were advised that the bill could address this if necessary for public protection. Since yesterday, of course, we have now seen the Prime Minister take the next step. It was further acknowledged, however, that if public health advice is disregarded and the extra powers are needed, this will be putting additional strain on public services in terms of enforcement. So to summarise uh, the views at yesterday's meeting, members acknowledged the measures in the bill went beyond what they might ordinarily support and that the opportunity for scrutiny has been much less than they would ordinarily require. However, these are not ordinary times and require unusual, accent, or unusual action and solidarity. The Health Committee therefore agreed that in these circumstances it was content to support the extension of the relevant provisions of the Coronavirus Bill 
to this jurisdiction. Finally, in view of the extraordinary measures included, the committee also agreed that I should represent their support for the amendment in the House of Commons to provide for a six-month review. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and just like to um, ask to add a few remarks as a DUP health spokesperson. So, Mr. Speaker, from a party's perspective, we recognise and fully support measures to increase our pool of doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers. The emergency registration of health professionals provided for in clauses two and four is a necessary step in preempting likely rising staff absence due to the virus and those self-isolating. Equipping our health service with the skills and expertise needed to meet the surge should be our foremost priority. There are, of course, issues in all of this that we must be cognizant of. We are hearing anecdotal evidence from some final year students and trainees struggling with unprecedented pressure of starting their careers in this environment. How will their well-being be safeguarded? How will older returning doctors and nurses be deployed so as not to increase their risk and exposure? Clauses 7 and 8 allow workers to take two, three or four weeks to volunteer in crucial health jobs, i.e. carers or porters without loss of employment rights, and this seems a sensible and measured proposal. We need to utilise all available skills from across our economy and society to meet this major health threat. It is important that crucial sectors providing support to public health response are not unduly weakened. And again, we have the issues requiring clarity. In what sectors will employees be able to take a period of absence? What training will be made available for volunteers of this kind? I would value some clarity on these issues. We welcome support and powers given to mental health workers, and we stand with them as they take such responsibility on their shoulders. I think it's of vital importance that there are provisions around indemnity. We are asking people to step outside their areas of specialism, and we need to provide them and their trusts with the security as they do so. Regarding registration of deaths and stillbirths, clauses 1720 relax certifying requirements. This proposal illustrates the scale of the threat of coronavirus and the likely impact in terms of fatalities. And Mr Speaker, it is important that morgues are not overwhelmed or supported by other service providers where possible, whilst ensuring vital doctor and nursing time is spent in the most beneficial areas rather than with bureaucracy. There are, of course, other aspects I'd like to raise, but I am conscious my colleagues will raise some in their contributions, and we must use our time in this chamber in a very focused way. Mr Speaker, we live in very uncertain days, and the nature and detail of this bill reflects this. It is a startling piece of legislation. It is a sobering piece of legislation, and it's a frightening piece of legislation. Sadly, however, it is also a piece of legislation that is necessary. Mr Speaker, coronavirus, COVID-19, is changing our world before our very eyes. What was normal is now exceptional or impossible. What we took for granted is now uncertain, and for how long, we simply do not know. Our constituents are frightened. I am frightened. Frightened for my husband, for my children, my parents, my mother-in-law, for my sister-in-law in the ICU unit, for wider family, friends, staff, colleagues, for this wee country which I love so much. But like anyone, when frightened, we look to others for reassurance, to the Prime Minister, to our First Minister, to our Deputy First Minister, to our Health Minister, to us as elected representatives. The onus is on all of us to take all steps necessary to provide this reassurance. I believe this legislation will enable us and empower us to do this. It is necessary, but let us all hope and pray that many of the provisions in it are never needed. Thank you. Thank you, and I call John O'Dowd. Gormi Ogat Kian Kolya, and it's quite clearly uh, a very difficult time for.